conclusion of the five theses on populism. Populism as a term that means the phenomena of the regimes that originate since the Mexican Revolution in 1910 and which expand themselves since 1930 in Latin America is a valid denomination. That's thesis one. On the contrary, the pejorative epithet populism, an epithet used to disparage those who oppose the Washington Consensus, Neoliberalism, which refers to popular neo-nationalist Latin American governments that protect the national wealth, governments which have been uh, have taken place since the end of the 20th century, must be ignored in the social sciences. That's thesis number two. On the other hand, one must distinguish clearly populism in the sense of thesis one from the popular and from the people, categories that must be constructed more fully but not abandon as complex. That's thesis number three. Articulated next to the question of the people, one finds the question of the exercise of popular power as a political system that creates new participative institutions at all levels of political structures in civil society, in the politics of the state, and constitutionally. The real democracy is linked to the effective organization of political popular participation. That's thesis number four, getting the balance right. Finally, one must reflect and theoretically integrate the question of leadership in order to avoid the traditional avant-gardism of like Marxist-Leninism or the charismatic dictatorship as much as certain populist spontaneity, uh, now in its negative sense, but with a different use than that of its of thesis too, showing its importance and necessity and explaining at the same time the democratic demands of its exercise. All right, so that's thesis five. Um, and this this previous paragraph with thesis five, um, he's saying, you know, we got to think about leadership and leadership needs to express the demands of the people. And in doing so, that's what constitutes uh, leadership. That is always rooted in the needs and demands of the people. I've represented these five theses for discussion with uh, pretense of the truth, that is to say with conscious uh, with with conscious of its fallibility knowing that it is fallible but knowing that only through debate they could attain the sufficient pretension of actual validity actual scientific validity uh, okay so so um, and so you know uh, that last paragraph is is pretty important to remember here is that he's proposing these theses uh, to invite debate, just like uh, Martin Luther, when he published his 95 Theses at the beginning of the Protestant Reformation in, in Europe in 1517, uh, he, he published those theses to invite debate, not, not to say that this is the way it is, and, you know, but to, to suggest some kind of framework uh, for discussing important uh, critical issues of the time. Uh, and so, you know, we get some interesting uh, ideas here. And uh, I think the way that he defines the people, the Pueblo, uh, I, I think, you know, there might be some value there for uh, for the uh, ecological justice movement, and also this question of leadership. I mean, how, so, and, and this could be applied, of course, to other movements, if you have some other thing in mind, but, but uh, I'm, I'm always just trying to frame, I'm trying to use the ecological cataclysm, uh, because I think that's uh, something that we all should be concerned about. <clears throat> And so it's kind of a, a catch-all 
for 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 our political thinking and so the notion of the people as Dussel defines it might have some some uh, some validity within the context of the ecological cataclysm but also we got to think about leadership uh, because many uh, environmentalist groups um, and activist groups in general uh, are in favor of a kind of anarchism, not in the, not in a, a, a colloquial sort of way of talking about anarchy, but um, but a, the actual political philosophy of anarchism, uh, which which emphasizes direct democracy and tries to institute direct democracy wherever possible and to the greatest extent possible. Uh, anarchism tends to, as a political philosophy, lead to the kind of Soviet chaos that, that Dussel referred to. Um, and, and often, and I think I've mentioned this in previous lecture, lectures, is that uh, anarchists I don't mind that um, because they're interested in the, in the experiment of seeing to, you know, how far can direct democracy actually work. And then they demonstrate, okay, it can work. Uh, at least in limited circumstances, uh, and that's good experience, but to actually address the ecological cataclysm, we need a strategic, we need strategic political action. And Dussel is suggesting that you need the people, and the people need to be self-conscious for itself, and you need political movements that coalesce, you know, to some extent, um, around some central themes uh, without disregarding the particular needs of, of, uh, of uh, component political movements. Uh, but at the same time, there needs to be leadership. And so, you know, uh, this is this is then uh, a problem. And, and now anarchists, they like uh, the political strategy of anarchism. One, one reason they like it is because there is no leader. And so you can't just assassinate the leader like Martin Luther King Jr. or uh, even Robert F. Kennedy for that matter. Uh, and you can't denigrate and, and, and use um, ad hominem arguments against the leader in order to destroy the movement, the movement is impervious to a leadership attack. Um, but Dussel is saying that there still needs to be leadership, but you need somebody who is uh, charismatic and who has this character of firmness uh, to keep on fighting back and fighting through the struggles, uh, even when they are attacked, and that can uh, nonetheless, maintain the support of the people and still be popular. Um, and so that's something to think about, and that's interesting. And one person that I uh, that I study quite a bit who's thinking about these things and is they're not well organized, but Roger Powell, he's one of the original founders of Extinction Rebellion. He has a lot of, to say about this as well, and, and he complained about this anarchism in the environmentalist movement uh, in the face of the ecological cataclysm. He's like, you know, we really need to be, we do need representatives, and we do need leadership. So it'd be interesting to compare what he has to say with what Dussel has to say. So I think there's just some. There are some good and valuable things that Dussel has laid out here, uh, especially in this chapter, in relationship to the ecological cataclysm. So I would like for you to, to think about that. Um, I think the easiest thing for the final essay is just to focus on this notion of the people and uh, but then, you know, compare that to the Communist Manifesto and, you know, really think about uh, 
does power belong to the people? Uh, I, I know that many students, sometimes it seems like the majority of students do not believe that. You don't believe that political power rests in the people. Uh, but has Dussel convinced you? And if not, what, you know, what is the alternative to just bow down to this power based in obedience to an authoritarian power? And is that really going to help? Um, and we always need to be thinking with the ecological cataclysm is that the deeper we get into the crisis, the worse it is. And so the more that people bow down to authoritarian um, government, even in, the, even in the form of liberal bourgeois representative government, if the needs of the people aren't being met, at some point that's going to cause a crisis. You know, when people really start suffering from the ecological cataclysm, when it's too late to really do anything about it, then we're going to have a, a serious crisis uh, on our hands. And so one thing that I want you to address uh, is, you know, how do you think that the worst aspects of the ecological cataclysm can be averted? How can we act early rather than just writing it down until it gets so bad that it explodes into um, unpredictable revolution? Is there a way to, to get ahead of the crisis uh, as, it, as we get deeper into it? And, and does the notion of the Puebla, the Pueblo as Dussel envisions it, is that helpful? And also his notion of, of uh, populist leadership, is that helpful? Could you see a populist leader helping to, to lead the people through the ecological crisis. All right. Um, so I'll leave that at that.